Today we're going to continue our series on Python by learning about a few of the collection data types that we have access to with lists and tuples. Up to this point, we've only been working with individual values like the number one or a string, or uh, we've used true and, true and false up to this point. But a lot of the programming that we're going to have to do in the real world is going to involve groups of data or a lot of data or um, just collections of the same values. So today we're going to look at how to do that. Uh, the two main types that we're going to use in Python are going to be lists and tuples, lists more so than tuples. So we're going to go over that one first. We'll do all of our programming today in the REPL, so we can start one of those now with docker run dash dash rm dash it python 3.5, and that'll start us right into the REPL. A list is created using square brackets and uh, then the contents of the list. So you can assign it to a variable, so we'll do that now. So my list equals square bracket, and then we can put some some things in here and we separate them by commas and this list can be indefinitely long so this is a list with four elements in it um, and so if we print it back out you'll see it has all the contents here but they don't have to be the same so they don't have to be one two three four we can we can change it to be something else so let's say we have a mixed list and this has one and oops and the letter a and a float and true and that works too so they don't have to be the same. Most of the time in our programming, they will be the same, but they don't have to be. So let's clear this out. And just looking at my list again, we have these four elements. Um, most of the time, we're not going to pass like work with the list as a whole like this. We're going to want to actually access the information that's on the inside. So we can do that through indexing. Uh, sometimes it's called subscripting, but uh, it's when you use a square bracket after the variable that has you the array, and then you pass in the index. And the way indexes work are, um, it's, it's, base, it's the order, it's the position that uh, an element is inside of the array, but it starts at zero, it doesn't start at one. So our number one is actually the zeroth element of the list here. So if we say my list zero, we get that, which that makes four actually the third element because it would go zero, one, two, three. So we do that, we'll get this. But what if we want the 10th element, or the, the actual 11th element, 10th index? Uh, we're actually going to get an error, and that's because you can't try to get an element from an, a list that isn't that long. So this is something to be aware of if you're just uh, working with a list that you don't actually know the length of. We can actually get the length of our list using the built-in len function. So if I say len my list, it will give me four. Um, and this len function actually works on other things. It works on anything that's considered a sequence, which a string is also a sequence. So just for the fun of it here, if we were to pass in the string that is my list, it'll tell us that that's actually seven characters long. We can use indexing to get a single element from the list, but we can use slicing to get multiple elements from the list. And what that'll actually do is it will return us another list. So if we take my list and we put another square bracket here and we say from one to three, this gives us zero, one, and then, so this would start here at the first index. It's going to give us two, and then it's going to go up to three, but not include three. So that's why it gave us a list that includes um, two and three. You'll notice that it doesn't affect the original list. It just uh, takes a section out of the, the main list and returns a new list to us. So we could assign that to a different variable if we wanted to. There are a few quirky things you can do with this. You can start at the beginning of the list by just putting a colon, and then you can go up to the third. So this will give us one, two, three. Uh, similarly, you can say, I want to start at the first one and go to the end, and that'll give us two, three, four. Notice that this one includes the ending. So it goes it goes past the ending, if you will, and then um, stops at whatever the, the end would be. It gives you everything up to the end. And then similar to if you saw the previous episode um, when we built our control flow, control flow program and we had to reverse a string, we can say my list, I want to go from the beginning to the end, and then I want to step by two. And what this means is I don't want, to give, don't want you to give me every one, I want you to give me every other one. So it'll give me the first one, it'll skip the second one, and then it'll give me the third item. Or 
um, like we did with strings, we could actually reverse it by saying I want to go from the beginning to the end, but I want to step negatively. So I want to go backwards, which that'll imply that it should start at the end and work its way towards what was the beginning. All right, now we know how to create a list. We know how to read single elements from a list, multiple elements from a list, and how to iterate over it in a weird way using slices. Um, but we can also add to lists. Lists aren't bound to a specific size. Uh, they can change. You can remove items, you can add items, um, and you can go from there. So if we say my list dot append, this is a method on, on the list uh, class. So I want to say append six, and I ask what my list is now, you notice we modified it. So now we have one, two, three, four, six. Um, and I can do that as many times as I want here. So I can append seven, put that in there. Um, yeah, and it'll give us the, uh, the new list here. If we're going to append multiple items, though, calling append every time is going to get a little annoying. So say we want to, we're going to make my list uh, one, two, three again, just for make this a little easier. One, two, three. Okay, so we clear this out, and we want to add more to it. So we can actually say my list plus, and then if you give it another array, it won't add an array as an element inside of the array. It will um, instead just combine the two. So we can actually, we'll do this um, using characters here, but notice that it doesn't, it returns something to us. Whenever we set a variable, it doesn't return something to us. It just puts us back to the prompt. So since this returns something to us though, it didn't actually change my list. So if we wanted to change my list to be that value, we would have to do it like this. We would reassign my list to, to this, and then we would have access to this new one. We're going to reset this back to one, two, three, and clear this out. So say we have an element inside of a list that we don't actually want to be there, or we want to change it. Um, you know, say something happened and we want to change a certain element in the list. Um, we can do that by once again looking at this one, two, three. Uh, if we give it the position, so we know that two is at the first index, and we actually want that to be a, we can just set it. So it's the same as reading from it. You would you use the same syntax that you would to read from it, and then you just say, "I want to assign that to something else." So now my list will be 1a3, but we can also do this using slices. So remember how we could we could set multiple things, um, or we could read multiple things using a slice and it would return a list. Well, we can say we want to use the syntax to read a slice. So in this case, we'll say from I want from 1 to the end, we're going to replace that with uh, 2, 3, 4. Now my list, oh, whoops my list will be one, two, three, four. And if you want to replace the entire uh, list, you can actually use subscripting to say from the beginning to the end, replace it with this other thing. So yeah, now we have, we have my list there as having only a single element. Now we know how to create, read, and write uh, to a list. The one thing that we're missing is how to remove items from a list. So if we if we reset this back to our, our base list here, and we want to remove the last item, we can say pop, and it'll remove four and, and actually return that to us. So that's important to realize is that it does return it. So uh, most of the time, if you're going to remove something, you probably want to know what you're removing. Um, and if we look at my list again, it only has one, two, three instead of one, two, three, four. Uh, pop takes an optional argument though so we can say pop zero and this is going to be the index so this should return one to us and then uh, my list will be two and three those are the basics of working with lists um, gives you enough to, to create them and if you want to create an empty list uh, you can actually just use empty brackets here so now my list is we have a clean slate and we could just add things to it as we want to but we we now have what it we need in order to create and read from and manipulate lists, which this is a good point. We haven't we haven't learned how to go through each element of a list like efficiently yet. That's going to be when we talk about iteration and loops. But we do know how to work with these now, and it's pretty common that you're going to want to keep things together. So you're like, these are all the same thing. Let me group them. So this would be very important to know. So let's talk about tuples now. Tuples are similar to lists in that they can hold. Um, a different amount of uh, items and they don't have to be the same type so uh, similar to how we held you know a one and a uh, 2.5 and true earlier you could do that with a tuple but the big difference between a tuple and a list is that you can't change it so if we create a tuple 
and you create a tuple using parentheses. So if I create one, two, three, and then close it with parentheses, that's fine. And I can actually, I can actually read from it and it'll give me the same things. But you'll notice that there's no, I can't set anything. So if I try to change the two to be say A, it's actually gonna raise an error because it does not support item assignment. Um, and that's because tuples are immutable is, is the term, but it basically means they cannot change. You'll use lists most of the time, and most of the time lists are gonna contain the same type of data, right? So it'll contain all numbers, it'll contain all strings, um, that kind of thing, so that's homogeneous data. Uh, tuples, on the other hand, tend to be used to for positional things. So like you would know that whatever is a zero is going to be true or false, and whatever is a one is gonna be a string or something like that. Like they'll hold heterogeneous collections, um, usually different types, and almost always uh, what's in each position is kind of important for that position like you're going to know what's going to be there so we have actually used tuples once in the past when we said print there are percent s planets and percent s and we passed it this eight and pluto that was us using a tuple into this format string and this is a pretty you know a pretty common case like you have to use a tuple in this case um but that makes sense right like so this first one this is the zeroth uh, percent s like it's important that we know you know that this is going to be eight and this second percent s we want it to be pluto but they're not the same type so ideally i guess you totally could have when they wrote the uh the format string syntax like this they probably could have had it take a list but it makes more sense to be a tuple because you're saying it's going to be exactly this length and it's going to have uh, things in exactly this position and then probably or maybe i guess won't be the same type so it makes sense to use a tuple here you're not going to use tuples super often but when you do just know that you can't change them all right well that does it for today um we covered the two main collection types that we're going to use in python lists and tuples lists are one of the most important things in all of programming they're sometimes called arrays uh, and there is a slight distinction between those two things but it's kind of not important um but they're one of the most common things we we ever use i'm almost always in my my work uh, iterating over some sort of list because I work with a lot of data. If you ever connect to a database, you're probably going to get read things out of that into an, a list at some point. So it's good to know how to work with lists. And we're going to need to know how to do all this stuff uh, as we start building more and more useful programs. So I hope you liked today's video. Uh, let me know what you thought and let me know what other topics you'd like me to talk about in the future. I'm going to continue my series on Python. We're going to go through and actually uh, get into programming some some decent sized uh, applications at some point. So I'm going to continue doing this one. I'm going to probably continue doing some Docker stuff, uh, but I want to know where I should go from there. So if you could, uh, I'd like it if you liked, shared, and subscribed um, to the channel. And just let me know uh, what you think of this content. And let me know what you're doing with what you learned from this content.